We're here in the Carlton Gardens with two fabulous women. Can we please get your names and why you're along here today? Hi, I'm Ruth D'Souza. And where are you from, Ruth? Um, it's a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> um, but recent, most recently, um, I've come from New Zealand to Melbourne to work. So I've been here for six years and uh, very excited about being here today. Brilliant. And Fiona. Yeah. And I'm Fiona, Fiona Patton, and I'm the member for Northern Metropolitan in Woo! the Legislative Council and the, yeah, the member for, for Reason as well. So I am very invested and interested in the health services in my region and, and what I can do to advocate for them. And she also has the best earrings on this uh, croaky walk. Close up please. Local. Fabulous. Hello, Gorman. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and there go my dogs being very naughty. <laughs> so, uh, can you please tell us about what you've learned so far today? It's been a, a great morning um, on the Crokey Go walk. Um, I'm a mental health nurse, but I've done most of my work in um, New Zealand and in England. And I'm still kind of learning about the local context. So, what's been fantastic was really getting in a bit of an idea about how the Victorian Aboriginal Health System came about and how it was inspired uh, th through Redfern, which is a, a really amazing place um, for Aboriginal sovereignty and conversations. And um, I, it was great to hear about Alma Turner and how that came to be. And also how much care um, the staff at VAS um, put into kind of addressing the social determinants of health and really thinking about financial well-being and um, treaty and land which are fundamental to well-being so I really appreciated that conversation and we've just come from uh, the lovely cafe at St Vincent's which I loved um, which was a sort of alternative to emergency departments um, I've done some research with a student at Monash around alternatives to emergency departments and it was just so lovely to see one that's so safe comfortable um, non-stigmatizing, non-pathologizing, friendly, warm, somewhere you would just feel was okay to go to. And I also know that um, in my own work, which is about racism and health, that people from culturally diverse backgrounds or people from indigenous backgrounds often don't feel safe in mainstream services. And I kind of thought, well, this is somewhere where I can imagine a lot of other people would feel comfortable. So I've really loved our walk so far. And of course, great uh, <laughs> companions on the walk and uh, good company. Yeah, I think that certainly um, that Crokey and, and Northwest Health have brought together so many people from different services. So it's just been, for me, been great having those conversations along the way, whether it's people from the autistic community or people from, yeah, from VOWS, which was wonderful hearing mm. the history of VOWS. And I'm working on spent convictions at the moment, which really affects our Aboriginal community here. So just learning more about the holistic services that they've been able to do. And it's something that non-Aboriginal health services really could learn from. But my other passion at the moment is loneliness mm. and social isolation. And in the UK, they've just set up a ministry for loneliness and they've done a cross-government strategy and one of the, the key areas and examples and reasons is because of lonely people presenting at health services mm. and in particular lonely people presenting at emergency. So it was really interesting to hear the St Vincent staff just reiterate that point and provide a much more positive place mm. for someone um, experiencing loneliness and social isolation than sitting in an emergency with a you know, with a headache or whatever it is that might bring them there. And one of the other places lonely people seek refuge is Pokies venues. Yeah, that's right. Could that's you right. speak a little bit more about your interest in gambling oh, reform, Fiona? And look, I have a great interest in gambling reform and I have been incredibly disappointed by the lack of movement from this government. You know, even just the small little amendments that we've tried to put through of limiting the hours that they're open, mm. limiting the amount of money that people can uh, you know, take out of their accounts, um, even just limiting the speed of which those things go round. Yeah. You know, these were modest changes and we couldn't even get those through. And yes, we know for, particularly for a socially isolated or lonely woman in her 50s and 60s, 
this a pokies venues is a safe place mm -hmm. and it's a place that they can say they're going somewhere so it's not the stigma of that socialisation. I'm going to the club. That's right. Where everybody knows my name. And it's democratised problem gambling, hasn't it? It's, 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 mm. yeah. it's, it's the great equaliser and uh, robbing from poor people to That's fund right. rich people. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, we know, look, Crown's been in the news at the moment um, about their high rollers. But I think what really should be in the news is the low rollers yes. um, and the people that are, you know, losing losing their house, losing their life savings, losing their mental health in these areas, which also will affect their physical health. The cost of those places uh, has poss possibly has got nothing. Com um, Crown has nothing compared to the cost of some of those venues. Definitely. It was great to hear at Vars that they've got some gambling counsellors and are yeah, working on that. Yeah, I've, I've also done some work in the problem gambling space, but mainly with international students and right. people from Asian and migrant backgrounds. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we underestimate is, um, <clears throat> you know, how hard it is to actually uh, admit to needing help that's right. and then finding the place. Yeah, you know, knowing where to go for help, uh, and I think that's where some leadership can be shown, which is what you're doing. Exactly, and I think you know, I think Melbourne University has been doing some interesting work on this as well. They've just set, set up a wellbeing hub, mm. and that's recognising international students um, that that they experience uh, loneliness, social isolation, which leads them into uh, having gambling issues or drug and alcohol issues, and to try and look at the prevention and that's what we've been hearing today that if we could prevent um, some of these issues it will be far more cost effective than dealing with with the acute pointy end of some of these problems thank you very thank much you. To you and you can i take your day? dogs home as well yes, yeah you can, yeah you can pick which one you want <laughs>